News NTV. Thank you, our viewers, for joining us. I'm Karaga Baldwins, and this is a beautiful evening. And we're going to be talking about an international partner issue because Uganda is going to host an epic conference uh, for the Commonwealth parliament parliamentary proceedings that uh, are internationally uh, cognizant with the politics and, of course, the economics of that Commonwealth. Before we go into a real in-depth uh, studio discussion, let's have this introduction, then we'll be right back. Queen Elizabeth II, in her address to Canada on Dominion Day 1959, pointed out that the Confederation of Canada on 1st July 1867 had been the birth of the first independent country within the British Empire. She declared, so it also marks the beginning of that free association of independent states, which is now known as the Commonwealth of Nations. The Commonwealth of Nations, normally known as the Commonwealth, is now a political association of 53 member states, nearly all of them former territories of the British Empire. It dates back to the first half of the 20th century with the decolonization of the British Empire through increased self-governance of its territories. In 1948, there was the founding of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, initially dubbed as the Empire Parliamentary Association, at a meeting on 18th July 1911 at what was then the House of Commons Committee Room 15 in the Palace of Westminster. As well as members of the UK Parliament, the meeting was attended by representatives of the then Dominion Parliaments of Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Newfoundland and South Africa, setting off the commitment towards this conference to an annual regularity scheduling hosted by different Commonwealth member countries. In November 2018, the Speaker of the Uganda Parliament, Rebecca Kadaga, was elected President of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association for 2018 to 2019 during the executive meeting held in London, UK. The Parliament of Uganda was tasked to hold the 64th Commonwealth Parliamentary Conference, or CPC, in September 2019 under the theme, Adaption, Engagement and Evolution in a Rapidly Changing Commonwealth. This conference is an added confidence vote to this beautiful country, Uganda, as being a global destination center for meetings, incentives, conferences and exhibitions tourism on top of the 2007 Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting and the 2011 Interparliamentary Union conferences. Historically in 1967, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Conference was also hosted for its first time in Uganda. As a way to engage the nation's public about the significance of this event in our country, NTV in conjunction with the Parliament of Uganda and its organizing committee of the conference have teamed up to generate interest and enlightenment on how capable citizens can capitalize on the economic and social potential that this opportunity presents. You're welcome. Once again, I'm Karaga Baldwin, and very delighted that you're joining us tonight for this very prolific discussion. And on our social media, we have posted a question asking you that Uganda is hosting this event, but do you think that such events are of any qualitative value to the ordinary person? And just let me set out just a few uh, responses before we get into the actual discussion. Uh, Ogwang Olot says that uh, I think so, however little value it might be, depending on the available demand, I expect some ordinary Ugandan to benefit following the outflow procedures. Uh, then, uh, I see Bragizi William saying that we are university students in Uganda who have innovated a platform that will heal the rampant sexual harassment. Okay, that's a bit uh, of the, the, the context. Then, lastly, Austin Segasta says that these are just wasting our taxes. We have biting issues at hand. Unfortunately, the government is investing in two politics instead of tackling issues that are being ordinary, are biting ordinary citizens. And please keep those very responses flowing in because the people here for this discussion are very authoritative to make sure that uh, we can move the discussion in a better practical manner. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And on my extreme left, I have Brigadier Felix Kulaije Mutini, uh, UPDF 
UPDF representative in parliament and head of security on the organizing committee of the 64th Commonwealth Parliament uh, Conference. You're welcome, sir. Mouthful. Thank you. Good uh, evening, uh, viewers. Yes, indeed. And uh, right next to me, on my left, Honorable Paul Amoru Omiat, MP Dokolo North, Vice Chairperson ICT and National Guidance, Chairperson of the 64th Commonwealth Parliament Conference Media and Publicity Subcommittee. It's longer than <laughs> it's longer than mine. <laughs> it's <laughs> yes. Yeah. So let, let me get you, Paul, right straight on this because yeah. you, you, the historical chronology of this conference, as I go in a descending order, you have Sri Lanka in 2012, uh, South Africa 2013, you have Yaounde Cameroon 2014, then 2015 there was none of this conference uh, conducted. London, UK hosted in 2016. Bangladesh 2017 and 2018 it was not hosted and Uganda is hosting it. Mm. Can you just give us an overview on your background on how the, we, we, we as Ugandans were selected for this conference? Okay, thank <coughs> you so much uh, Baldwings and uh, good evening to our viewers. Uh, it is a great opportunity for Uganda to have a second chance mm -hmm. of hosting this uh, international conference. 52 years uh, later and indeed it's it's a competitive process uh, for for a country to be selected uh, in 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 2017 Uganda and other countries made offers mm -hmm. uh, for to to be assessed first by the executive committee that sits in London and later it was supposed to go to the general assembly mm -hmm. for voting so, but in 2017, uh, there was a terrorist attack in Bangladesh. Yes, I remember. So, uh, that conference was now held in London. So, the executive committee first sat in London and viewed, uh, was able to review the, 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 the countries that had offered. And usually, they look at your capacity mm -hmm. to host uh, uh, a conference of that uh, stature. They look at issues of security. <coughs> they look at uh, the, the, the parliament, its independence and maturity and, 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 and how it uh, conducts business uh, and many more other, other, other things that uh, would make the delegates to be comfortable and, 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 and to come and participate. So the executive committee found Uganda to be most uh, befitting and they voted overwhelmingly that Uganda should host this 52 years later. And indeed, in uh, 2018, when Bangladesh had now opportunity to, to host what they missed, mm -hmm. the General Assembly put this to a vote. And Uganda was confirmed unanimously yes. that uh, it should host this. And so the vote was both for the venue, mm -hmm. but also for the incoming president. So our the right honorable speaker, uh, Rebecca Letwala Kadaga, uh, she is she's well celebrated on the international scene as much as here locally and so our track record and performance and 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 emphasis on most of the values that the parliament the commonwealth parliamentary association stands for uh, made it possible for us to win so she is also now the president designate of the commonwealth parliamentary association okay so 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 then the next stage to that mm -hmm. the secretary general of the commonwealth parliamentary association That's had to visit mm -hmm. uh, he, he visited twice early in the year and then around around april to assess for himself to look at the venue to meet the national organizing committee and uh, he was overwhelmed with the level of preparations and said we, we had shot over and above the expectations. Mm -hmm. So as I speak, Uganda is very happy about this and we, we expect that Ugandans will look up to uh, the many things that will happen mm -hmm. uh, because these opportunities come most times once in your lifetime. You can be lucky to, <laughs> to exist yeah. twice because another time we will have this, mm -hmm. it will be over uh, 52 years yes. again. Hopefully not. Yeah, because we have we have 54 member uh, members uh, member states yes. as of now, and 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 every state would want to to have the opportunity because mm -hmm. of the benefits that we shall share 
later that come with this. Okay, thanks uh -huh. for that synopsis about this uh -huh. particular qualification to have this. So, Honorable Felix, yes, definitely you are a resounding name to the public and uh, you're well known. You I'm, a soldier, I'm humbled. Uh -huh, you're a soldier <laughs> in parliament, a uh, representative, uh, a representative <coughs> of the UPDF. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you, you have public perception problems of Uganda's parliament and I need you to, uh, in a very humble way, res be receptive to this. The, the public most of the people, uh, or perhaps some of the people, let me say some of the people, they feel that parliament is subservient to the executive, that there's excessive greed and burden to the state pass by parliamentarians, that there's, the, the parliament so far has been held hostage by the military to the, pro, to, to the very ostentious proof that you are actually part of parliament, you UPD of people representing parliament. So th there is the theme uh, of this particular conference and it's asking that there should be an adaptation and there should be a, a view, rather a review of how you as parliament approaches to repair the reputation damage that passed by that being done. So how does this conference theme, uh, which is adaptation, engagement and evolution of parliaments in a rapidly changing commonwealth address the needs of Uganda's local parliamentary strengthening and development without you uh, uh, ignoring the public perception? No, of course, I can't ignore the public perception because um, the public is what we serve. We serve the people of Uganda, both as government and in particular as parliament. But uh, can I ask uh, a question that not necessarily that you have to answer it? Tell me anything in Uganda that Ugandans are never skeptical about. I'm yet to find one. And, and for me, I find that very unfortunate you find the other people are very appreciative of our institutions, of the things we do in this country, but Ugandans themselves go out there and they begin attacking. This is the only country I've seen that people don't praise their own achievements. Yet when you interact with our neighbors, they are very proud of their country. They, you want to say we have more problems than they do? Definitely not. But maybe it's in our psyche. Two, <laughs> we come from you. He was elected by the people, I was elected by the UPDF, the UPDF comes with the population. If you are not happy with your parliament, check yourself. But I mean, I think that uh, we try to compare our parliament against, I don't know, a, a standard I, I'm yet to find. Because those of us who bother to read about other countries, you find we are better off in many ways, many ways, than many people would have thought, or how others are doing a business. Talk about the independence of parliament. Actually, this is the only parliament that checks the appointments of the president. Yes, Congress in the US, you can see where we measure. A country that has been independent for over 350 years is where we measure our standards. If that's not an achievement, then English has changed the meaning. Two, where we came from, the people who were colonial masters of this country, the British, mm -hmm. they began parliamentary democracy in 1353, 1335 actually. But women were allowed to vote in 1929, after how many centuries? Even then, today, our female colleagues earn mm -hmm. the same amount of money we do. Mm -hmm. In UK, the ladies earn lesser than their male counterparts. In fact, the BBC bureau chief in China resigned two years ago because she was earning less than her counterparts. So why don't we celebrate the achievements of a parliament? They, my colleague has said, look at uh, why is the speaker celebrated internationally? If the parliament was indeed subservient to the executive, then she wouldn't be getting the accolades that she's getting. Three, our involvement as the UPDF. You know, when you want to study phenomena, then start from the root, or start from the beginning. How does the military get into our parliament? First of all, it is not new. It's not unique to this government. Number three, we have a history. And the society that does not follow its history easily gets lost, or makes mistakes because you are repeating mistakes of the past. In fact, some people have said that history does not repeat itself. Rather, People repeat the same mistakes that have happened in the past. So for us to avoid the pitfalls of the past, we got a solution. 
that the first solution to instability in the third world, and in particular in Africa, is keeping the military hidden somewhere. And when you fail to solve the political issues of the day, you remember to open for them, mm. as if you're opening for dogs to deal with thieves. Mm. Now, we were scientific enough to say, no, we know our past, and the best way of insulating our constitution is involving every sector of our population. Now, if it has served us well for 33 years, and yet others are having issues of stability, of political progress, of democracy, you talk about, oh, you know, our parliament is not dependent. Check how many bills in the parliament will pass. Check how many issues from the executive we question, and others even we stop. Because how do you get the independence of parliament? Is in as far as how they can make decisions. Maybe it, allow me use this opportunity, um, Honorable Paul, mm. to elucidate on operations of parliaments mm. in a multi-party democracy. Parties have caucuses, mm. and issues are hammered out in the caucus. So that by the time you come to parliament, mm. a particular party has a position. It's in this parliament that you have individuals taking decisions against the majority decision of their political parties mm. and they still remain in that house. Yes, but, and, and you don't think that those decisions at times are very arbitrary, very centered on perhaps one individual interest because that is where the challenge is. Now, now Honorable Felix, I need to just have a break because usually... And I will start with uh, your last question. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go. Our viewers, please, let's go for a break and we'll be right back to just have a more expounded uh, discussion of this particular subject. Thank you. Thanks for keeping with us. I'm Karagawa Bodins, and we're coming to you live from the Campus and International Conference Center. And thanks for just being with us online as we have been uh, going through that particular question, asking you whether these events are of any benefit, economically or socially, to the ordinary person. And uh, just one quote uh, from uh, Igunga's response. He says that they would have been beneficial to the ordinary people if the tenders associated uh, with such a uh, given out fairly, say, accommodation, transport, feeding, and the like, it's indeed unfortunate that they are uh, instead given to relatives of government officials who are even more expensive and inefficient. <coughs> okay, gentlemen, you're hearing <laughs> just the, uh, the skepticism and the lack mm -hmm. of trust in government in as much as you're trying to sell this whole project. Now, before I come to Honorable Paul uh, about mm -hmm. the whole process of organizing, you were just concluding that point from yes. here, uh, based on what you hear, especially from people who don't share the same political view with you. Your, the, with, with the current government. Yes. They feel that most of the things which are done by parliament are simply to serve the interests of the president. That well, is clearly I, where I, the whole... Yes. I will just give about three uh, points, and very briefly. First yes. of all, parties are supposed to be organized along interests. Okay? Mm -hmm. Two, in the pursuit of those interests, therefore, majority decisions have to be to rule. It's in this country where I've seen a minority wanting to rule the majority. <laughs> and that is democracy, not democracy. Three, and this is my last point. In the pursuit of these interests, democratic principles require these parties to caucus, to have a common position when they come to the plenary. Mm -hmm. Now, if the ruling party uh, pursues interests that apparently seem to favor the president, remember, he's the party president, See the apartheid chairman, and in that house, the majority of decisions must reign. So if, in your view, they are favoring the president, is the president having the mandate of the people? The answer is yes. And is he, whatever he's doing, how would you mark it? Is it meeting the expectations of the majority, not the minority? Yes, minority interests must be respected, but they should not override majority interests. Okay, uh, good defense on that particular aspect, uh, but we have to go on because the mm. central discussion is about the 64th Commonwealth mm. Parliamentary Conference. Mm. And uh, Honorable Paul, I, I can see on the 7th of June, as you are saying, the Secretary General of uh, this particular association, Akbar, 
Khan, uh, he gave a, a commending uh, response and says that he was impressed by Uganda's readiness to host this particular conference. Mm. So how is the conference generally organized and uh, what is Uganda's cost input? Uh, because people are estimating that this is likely even to go into 20 billion shillings, Uganda's mm. cost <laughs> input. Yeah? yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, like uh, we have already observed, a lot of work started uh, last year, actually. First four was by constituting the committee, the National Organizing Committee, uh, and, and also coming up with the key subcommittees that should help to execute the nitty-gritty of what we intend to have. So you have, uh, like you have two of us are heading uh, two subcommittees. Uh, Brigadier here is heading uh, security mm -hmm. and protocol. I'm heading media and publicity. Uh, we have the conference committee that uh, oversees uh, the entire organization. We have the committee on excursion, which is largely selling uh, some key uh, tourism sites because we will be taking delegates there at their cost and, and also the accompanying persons. Uh, which I will explain a little, I will benefit from, from that group. Then uh, we have accommodation, uh, we have uh, conference, management. conference management, and so forth. And uh, so, uh, so all these teams are working together to deliver mm. uh, a good conference. Uh, for example, you see, we, like within the media, which we launched, also we called all the editors, uh, we shall be establishing a state-of-the-art media bureau at uh, the conference venue where um, local media and foreign media are able to operate for seven days uh, and, and either file their stories, upload mm. or stream whatever they want within the conference venue and that is that uh, directly is and, yeah, in, at Munyonyo. So conferences like this usually uh, is cost-shared Mm -hmm. We have a uh, contribution that comes from the Secretariat. Mm -hmm. We have the contribution that comes from registration fee. And then, and then uh, the contribution that the government of Uganda has to put. Indeed, uh, all of that, the, 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 the budget, the projected budget is around 20 billion. Uh, and uh, uh, to contribute to this basket, is that locally sourced uh, billions or yes support? well uh, I, like i was telling you mm. we we have contribution from the secretariat we also have and this is very critical uh, when we attract many people then it's able to substantially sometimes Compensate. even over 50 percent of the costs because every delegate is registering and for members of parliament and speakers, there are over 500 of them. So you have uh, speakers from 54 countries around the Commonwealth uh, uh, family. And each of them, each of those speakers, pays a registration fee. And then he's coming with a delegation of members of parliament. Each of them pays a registration fee to Uganda. And then you have accompanying persons. You have observers others from different uh, inter international organizations, different agencies. So all of this, which we cannot for now place a specific figure on, but it de uh, how we do publicity, how we market uh, the destination, Uganda, and what else is in store for the delegates over and above the discussions that we shall have during plenary and all of that, is going to help us. Sometimes you can be fortunate that the, 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 the collections you make actually can offset mm -hmm. uh, the entire budget. So I think uh, we, we shouldn't be worried about that. Uh, definitely Uganda will have to provide uh, security and uh, that's why we have the very able brigadier here in charge yeah. mm -hmm. of that. Uh, just on Monday we were at the airport mm -hmm. uh, to meet with the uh, uh, with the airport authorities and, and see, because we shall have very, very important persons arriving, how will they be received, their delegations. So Uganda will have to, to have security uh, around. 
to take care of the teams that are coming in to, to for the travels because they are going to be traveling within Kampala and also outside Kampala uh, and then we have so we have to provide uh, vehicles to pick uh, the speakers mm -hmm. uh, because these are VIPs uh, but uh, over and above that uh, uh, the tradition now is that previously the burden was very heavy on on hosting the countries hosting, yeah because for instance you have to pay accommodation for now they register but also they pay for their accommodation what we have done mm -hmm. is to uh, to register our credit uh, 20 hotels that went through proper vetting yeah, and i'm coming to that within yes. within the ca and all of these are yeah. our hotels here in uganda we are yeah. not taking any, del any delegates to to, to the neighboring countries <laughs> to kenya <laughs> so yes. they are here with i'm us. going to come to speak to that about the readiness of the hospitality and the tourism industry mm. uh, and okay uh, quite a comprehensive approach on preparing mm. uh honorable felix so in 2012 over 1000 delegates converged for the ipu uh, conference as in the national uh, Parliament's Union Conference and um, its related meetings hosted by the Parliament uh, were over one f uh, just over 150 parliaments and uh, the accusations that business benefits majorly accrue to high-placed government officials just as you had uh, one mm. of the responses from our social media uh, correspondent. So he's giving this very glossy and uh, flowery benefit package for the population but actually there is a whole lot of skepticism and based on uh, evidence of uh, earlier audits that were current for chogam for ipu and for other major conferences people have not benefited as much it seems so what is the in, in your own emphasis here how economically uh, beneficial is this to first of all allow me to start with an appeal yes can we stop always looking at the, gla the glass as <laughs> half empty? Yeah, on my part, I have to look at it as half empty so that you no, make you fill it up. Yes. You know, it's not you alone. <laughs> this is the, past, the, the attitude of Ugandans. Yes. Start from a yeah. positive angle. Mm -hmm. The glass is half full. Mm -hmm. Once you start from that angle, <coughs> then you'll be able to see things in the positive perspective. In the positive perspective. Look at the business that's going to, to come to the country. You are talking of over 1,500 people paying for accommodation. For starters, that's meant our hotel industry. <laughs> Two, the food they are going to eat, they will pay for it. That's money to the country. Three, they are going to pay visa fees. Except those with that are visa exempt according to countries, which are not very many. That's money into the country. Four, transportation. Yes, we have vehicles prepared. But the other people who are not being catered for by parliament, mm. they will hire their own vehicles. Mm. The other countries that actually prefer to hire their own transport mm. when they go to some of these countries, all that is money. For me, I would ask Ugandans, position yourself. Mm. What do you have available? Right? Mm -hmm. There is an exhibition going to take place. Mm. Uh, actually, allow me to compliment my colleague. Uh, my committee handles accreditation. Protocol is a different committee. So in the sip of time, you had mentioned the protocol. Mm -hmm. I handle accreditation. So we, are, we have even issued the dates when we should be accrediting mm -hmm. those who are going to exhibit in this conference. And we are not limiting mm -hmm. okay. to it's open. Five, they are going to go up country. Kaguru, uh, Equator, um, Maya Resort. These, are, these places, they are going to spend money. So what am I talking about? You who is lamenting about last time, because I don't have evidence, what happened in IPU. But I know it was a successful conference. Mm -hmm. Then look at the publicity of the country. Coca-Cola is what I normally give as an example. Mm -hmm. Coca-Cola started, Coca started production before I was born. But every month, they change jingles. That's money being paid. These conferences are advertising our country world over. So, you as a Ugandan, what is it that the world is going to see that you are producing? You see, even if rain comes the whole day, the whole week, if you don't have gutters that are directing water into your tank, you go to waste. it will go to waste. Mm. So, similarly, as these people come here, 
what are you tapping into this conference as a Ugandan? What is the standard of what you're offering? I know I give the example of our sisters, the ladies. Why do you think they check themselves every day and in every mirror? They are competitive with both real and imaginary <laughs> competitors. <laughs> so can we compete? Because we are competing in the international market. So there is business that we are going to have. There is publicity of our country. Tourism. How will tourists know what you have if they are not seeing what is going on in the country? Mm. All right? When you talk about conferences coming, when you see conferences coming frequently to your country, one, that's a vote of confidence in your stability. It's a vote of confidence in your capacity, as owner will put it. It's a vote of confidence in your ability to feed your visitors. It's a vote of confidence that you have what it takes to host such a conference of such magnitude. So can we jump out of our village thinking? <laughs> and, and, and then, three, can we stop what I call normally co-wife attitude? Since I don't support the government in the power, then something, nothing good is going to happen. Excuse me. Things are happening. The bottom line determines what you are going to do. And then check the subcommittees we are talking about. Are they being dominated by the ruling party? No. The person handling, handling the budget of the entire conference is from FDC. Honorable Elijah Kupa, he's the chairperson of the budget subcommittee. And others. Yeah. What am I saying? This is a national conference. For me, I would want to challenge each one of us. Yeah. Instead of adding a chapter on the book of lamentations, <laughs> which is not allowed, please <laughs> position yourself to benefit from this conference. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank, thank you. For, yeah, very well put, indeed. And uh, yeah. some of these questions come to make sure that we are a bit genuine in the discussions to reflect also sentiments uh, elsewhere. Then they are but good. definitely, this is a very critical and uh, uh -huh. beneficial activity. So, uh, participants and uh, and delegates are coming, and you've selected hotels, and I think they are tourism destinations. Yeah. Tell us about the readiness of that. Yeah, um, they was very careful. Um, study of uh, the, the, the facilities we have. Uh, first of all, in fact, we have, we have gotten to a stage where uh, it's no longer an issue even attempting to ask whether Uganda has capacity to, to host uh, conferences of that uh, magnitude. And that's why, uh, especially after Chogam, when we, by the way, just to, re to refresh your memory, when we first hosted uh, uh, CPC in uh, 1967, we did not have any facility at all. Uh, so Apollo Hotel, uh, the present day uh, Sheraton, had to be uh, hurriedly, government invested very heavily in that and then also... Oh, so Sheraton Hotel was put up in response to that. Yeah, yeah, to host that <coughs> and, and, and also Chobe, <coughs> Safari Lodge mm -hmm. at, at the Massachusetts National Park it was also uh, put in place and, de and delegates were taken to that place. And so, if you look at, so those, there were two facilities. Yes. That, that, so when you now look at our capacity down the, 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 from that time to, de to date, and, uh, when, especially when we hosted the Chogam, and, and uh, our, the Ugandan borders has been open mm -hmm. to, to all these high-profile uh, uh, conferences. And uh, you, you saw UN. Mm -hmm. uh, also some of the pictures yes, of the hotel yes, facilities. Yeah, the you saw UN. Uh, hosting the, 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 the refugee conference. Mm. The whole world was here. Uh, and then we had IPU. And now we have uh, CPC. And more are coming. Uh, private sector, there are many of these. It's so Uganda is now a destination. And, and, and definitely you're going to see the, the, the benefits as uh, uh, Brigadier was talking about. Others are immediate. Others are long term. Uh, the, 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 the benefits that will accrue. There are many visitors that will come and then plan to come back for a holiday to Uganda. So our hotels, uh, we took the Secretary General, Mr. Khan, it was, uh, we took him to Munyonyo, we brought him here to Serena, we, uh, Sheraton. So 20 hotels in mm -hmm. the, within the outskirts of Kampala, others have, are preferring to stay in Tewe. Uh, and others are even going outside uh, the, 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 the 20 hotels that we have uh, selected and, and we still maintain it is safe. Uh, 
Uh, so, so uh, uh, in, in as far as the readiness uh, and capacity to host this is not in doubt, like we told you, we already got uh, a, a, a long take mm. from the Secretary General, who comes, is, is, he has the, inter the international standard, but he comes yeah. with the perspective to look at. And, and some of the areas that uh, 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 I was talking about, in the area of de uh, democratic governance. Mm. You recall that actually Uganda was suspended some time back in the, in the 70s, mm. 70, 71, 72? 72. From the, com uh, from, from the Commonwealth. Because, and this, their yardsticks, their standards, their values that are reviewed every year. And indeed, the worst thing that CIP, uh, the Commonwealth would do is to associate with a country that does not uh meet those the basic standards okay. leave alone hosting it because even just membership like we were, we were suspended from being members but to go as far as uh, uh accepting to be hosted by a country that some people think as you you are reading and has been explained by brigadier here does not m meet the democratic governance uh, pra uh, practice and all of that is definitely uh, overstretching this. It's important for the public to remain critical, to, to always ask questions, to hold government accountable. This is very necessary. But we want that always to remain objective. We need to get moments when we pull together as a country and understand what is good for us and see the opportunities that we have as a country. Not everybody can be president, not everybody can, can be a journalist, like you know, doing everyone can. So, but all of us, from all different walks of life, from all the sectors, we need to see what are the investment opportunities. We, we have investors coming here to see. That's why we, sh we shall be having an exhibition and it's open to the, uh, across the country. The entertainers that, yes. that we shall have both at the opening ceremony and at the closing ceremony. We are picking them from across the country. Mm. And some are coming from, 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 from the east, from the north, and you will be seeing them. And, and so this is the deliberate position that uh, we, we have been able to take under the leadership of uh, the Right Honourable Speaker to ensure that uh, uh, every Ugandan feels part of this. Uh, of course, we, we are going to be having some extras, like yeah. the, the President <coughs> will be at the, at the opening, but also he's going to have a dinner mm. with the with the, with the delegates at state house and, and all of these are still opportunities and international every speaker mm -hmm. over and above the the accreditation we have given to about 240 journalists but every speaker's delegation also has an elaborate press team and 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 then we have the international all of them the, the lenses will be on us so I, so I, money yes so so so, so democratic governance you see when you associate the peer to peer relationship there's there's always always an accountability mechanism where uh, uh uh when we meet we are able to remind ourselves we're able to set standards we're able to set best practice that we want every day <laughs> we cannot say we have arrived no country will arrive that's why even as a christian you can't stop going to church that i've read all the bible i've understood <laughs> it and i no longer need to go to the pastor to pray for me mm. It, we are going to continue to do that until uh, God decides that. Uh, <laughs> so go to so, him so that is their physical infrastructure, uh, uh, okay. in improved uh, capacity, uh, yeah. boosting our economy, foreign exchange. The forex bureaus are all warming up. Oh, okay. Uh, to, just to, just to, a pause on yeah. that, Honorable Paul, because yeah. we need to go for a break. And uh, it definitely, there's just so much elaborate mm. uh, benefits that are coming through mm -hmm. this. But there's an eating, there's, there's a problem eating up uh, the whole world, and mm. particularly the Commonwealth, the Asian countries. Pacific and of course Africa about youth unemployment. When we come back, Honorable, I need you to help us understand how this particular association is trying to alleviate or perhaps mitigate this problem. Thanks to our viewers for keeping with us. When we are back, we'll conclude this discussion. Thank you.
Thank you for continuing with us as we're wrapping up this discussion. We're asking ourselves uh, about how you as an individual out there, you can be able to capitalize on this very uh, elite and epic conference that we're going to hold of the Commonwealth 54 countries and rich, of course, and some which are, uh, are not doing that well. But all of them are bringing resources in this country. And uh, we've asked another question on your advice on how we should benefit from this. And I can see Patrick O'Court saying that local goods be branded made in, uh, in China or USA or Britain, uh, rather other than having those that are branded USA, uh, Britain, and China. Instead, we should brand our own and make them local. Uh, maybe find ways of trading with other countries in the Commonwealth. On a political side, countries in Commonwealth should find ways of uh, engendering political dispensation. Okay, not pretty clear uh, submission. So, Honorable Felix, uh, yes. of course, in cognizance with the response from the audience. There, the, there is a, a wide problem, a very bothersome problem of youth unemployment. Young people below the age of 35 or even below 30. And uh, here in, in the country, Uganda is so specifically, the, there's a research that has been done by the Advocate Coalition for Development and uh, Environment saying that youth un unemployment is standing at about 70%, very frightening. And about 30% of those youths who are institutionally qualified in Uganda are unable to find jobs, and the situation is even worse for semi-skilled uh, people. Now, as an association, and uh, particularly uh, for this particular conference, how is this going to be addressed? And definitely not just in rhetoric. How do you think this is going to be addressed? Uh, first and foremost, when we talk about the economic um, benefits that are going to accrue from host, hosting such a conference, in the long run, this money is not going to into pockets. Just hotels are going to reinvest, or business people are going to supposed to, to reinvest. But besides that, it's a critical examination of this unemployment. Again, mm. it depends from the <coughs> angle. Is the youth bulge uh, a disservice, a danger, or it's an opportunity? I will tell you, one of the reasons why Japan lost the second position as the, most, the, the second biggest economy in the world was because of the population type. Mm. The working people were less than the consumers in terms of age, because the Japanese are living longer. Yes. Mm. So you will find a small population is sustaining a bigger population. Now, when it comes to Africa and the many of the third world countries, it is going into one. What's the level of industry in the country? Even the, in the, the sector that has been active for ages, agricultural sector, how many youth are involved in it? Instead, what has been happening? rural urban migration people are selling land to buy border border three what is our attitude to work because you see instead of crying about a job for me i believe innovation is the first answer because each one of us wherever we are there are existing opportunities the problem what are the lenses we are wearing what capacity do you have I mean, let's be honest to ourselves. When you go to university to study human resource and personal management, how many companies are going uh, are actually looking for human resource uh, managers? Yeah. When you are studying political science and sociology, what are you coming out to do? For me, these are the questions I now ask when I meet young people. Number four, what's the role of government? Government is supposed to do four things. Create stability so that people can invest. Build infrastructure, so that those who are investing have roads to use to reach the market, to reach the source of raw materials. Three, provide conducive fiscal and monetary policies to manage the market, the money market. Four, communication. If you check, over 18 million Ugandans are now on phone. Yes. But what are we using the phone for? So, in my humble view, a conference like this one is actually push putting uh, and it is injecting capacity into the economy in terms of financial resources. My role as a Ugandan how is to question myself, how can I tap into these visitors who are coming? Mm. But when you drive on a road and you see nothing <coughs> is being sold on the roadside, 
and yet it's a tarmac road. It costs money to build, but the population along that road is not tapping into this uh, beautiful infrastructure that has been built. Then you get what about the country? So for me, I'm looking at, in fact, instead of going to on seminars and conferences to study the level of unemployment, start with dealing with the question of our attitudes, the mentality. If only we can run away from looking quick money, from quick, for looking for quick money, and go long term. If Ford, if Diamond and Benz went for quick money, they wouldn't be having doing the market to date. Mm. So of, of course, on, Honorable, you're not too political because you're representing UPD. But you see, politicians actually are the ones who have quashed that particular principle, whereby all of a sudden they're in government, and in just a span of about months, they have literally a billion shillings. They're raising up uh, skies, rather <laughs> uh, mansions. They're doing money is quickly um, um, gotten, ill gotten, or perhaps properly gotten when you get in parliament or rather parliament or government and that perception for you thinking that uh, the young people are not innovative they're not being yeah. responsive yeah. It, it is generated <laughs> at times by the and, and you're, you're using the other the other approach no, i did not say they are not innovative okay i say, mentioned things we need to, to do mm. or need to have mm. when i speak i expect the viewer mm. to do self-evaluation mm. self-examination mm. what have i done on my part mm. or if I did not get a job because of my academic qualifications, have I gone back to say, I better repackage myself mm. to suit in the market? But imagine that the market will shoot, will turn, turn itself and so that it is available for me. For it. It's <laughs> naivete. Mm. Yes. And lastly, uh, and, and uh, Mr. Modesto says, I'm glad you brought it up. No, can, no government. Actually, this government, in my humble view, has made one mistake, giving people money. This is the only government, check across the world, that has given money to individuals in their hands. And what do they do? We are talking about unemployment. People have sat under a mango tree and shared money given in under YLOP. People have held cows by the collar. This is our money given to us. But it's not your money. It's money to use, to make yourself better, and others use it. So until we realize that no one else owes us a living, but each individual must look after himself or herself. And what's the way to go? What's the opportunity available? If, if opportunity has been created, utilize it. But to expect that uh, NTV will become around and give us like a, you have won this vehicle and you have won this. <laughs> well, those are like a lottery. Yeah. Yes. They don't come to everybody. Okay, uh, thanks for being actually, and around, around the, the yes, because of this we are within the conference yeah. itself. Yeah, uh, there is a structured uh, I want you to just round as, table mm. as you're responding to that. It will mm. also include how you are trying to. under the youth livelihood program billions of shillings some dis some districts get up to 800 to 1 billion per financial year uh, for youth projects and we have teams on the ground uh, the cows the production officers uh, the and, and, and the probation officers that are supposed now to guide these young people and ensure that the investment of this money is is able to turn their lives around you talk about innovations already within the Ministry of ICT, the Innovation Fund, about seven billion. Like this, this particular financial year, seven billion is going to young people who are innovative uh, in ICT and other areas of skills-based competencies, and 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 there's already a plan to ensure that this is decentralized so that we have regional hubs. Uh, I'm happy. I just learned last week that uh, the UCU. Mbale campus is, is, has already established a hub uh, that is looking at innovations. And, and so a lot of work has been, but I think some people have either chosen not to take advantage because opportunities 
also meet preparations and 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 then ability to work on it so uh so what the commonwealth is going to do we don't want to sit at one end and mm. think the young people should be at the receiving end we want the youth to be involved in discussing and 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 making proposals mm. on what is workable and uh, uh two days ago the i saw a delegation from the national youth uh, uh council headed by uh, Ms. Lilian Abe and her team, they met the right honorable speaker because there's going to be a round table. So our uh, Ugandan youth, youth leaders, including those in school under Uganda National Student Association, will be meeting with their counterparts from around mm. the Commonwealth uh, nations. And uh, they will be in a round table and they will assess these things so that we secure commitment at such a high profile uh, meeting, conferences. And when we say uh, engagement, uh, uh, adaption, it is then that the resolutions of, of this conference is, is cascaded, it is, it is sent to, to these parliaments and you find that the speakers of these parliaments have been there, they have committed themselves to it and when they go back home, they are then able to work on policies, they to work on legislation that make it viable for what has come out from the youth roundtable, even there will be one on women, we have on, uh, on people with disability, on climate change, and these are very critical. Uh, you, you saw the wildfires in the in the Amazon, Amazon forest, Brazil, uh, Brazil yeah. and <coughs> this has been uh, the ecosystem has been absorbing a lot of carbon. So the the, the world is exposed, and Uganda is not uh, any difference. He was getting a call from somebody in Kisoro, mm. saying Kisoro is very hot. So these are very critical issues mm. that we want uh, Ugandans to pay attention. And indeed, Ugandan parliament and the government of Uganda is going to take very, very seriously the resolutions, especially that are made here in Kampala for the rest of the world to go back and implement. Mm. And so, so I think this is a great opportunity, uh, once again, uh, uh, if I must repeat, that uh, we should be positive about. There is another law. We had, under the PPD Act, the, 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 the law on local content. It is being enriched where we would want to see, uh, f f for example, at a district level, when you see the contracts mm. in billions that come through the local governments, people who compete for it, you find someone who has been in business for 20 years, is at the regional level there, is competing for supplying desks, for sub <laughs> sub supplying scholastic materials, is also competing for, for building roads, is also competing for probably getting contracts with the, with the, with the rare. So to, to help with the, the rural electrification. Yeah. So, so I think we want to segment their the, businesses that, 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 that would support beginners mm -hmm. or young people. And we are under the, the Skilling Uganda program. And you have seen the investment that has gone into uh, vocational institutions and technical colleges mm -hmm. uh, and the specialization around that. So, so that when these people come out, uh, well over governments, are not the answer to employment. Government jobs. Uh, it is always private sector led. And then you want uh, uh, job creators. People have sets of skills that can meet the market demands. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then they are productive. Yes. They're okay. productive. And yeah. like he talked about uh, honor in labor. Yes. A, 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 lot, a, a lot of people <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, want to be selective about the kind of jobs they will do. People yes. talk about America, the land of opportunity and all that. But when you see what people do, people have honor. If, if, if I am a carpenter, if I'm a car washer, if I'm a gardener, I do that with a lot of honor mm -hmm. and, 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 prof and, and professionalism yeah. and, and do it to the best of my ability. Mm. And this is the concept that we must understand. People think you have to first wear a suit and a tie for you to earn a decent <laughs> living. And yet the, the actual works, the real paying jobs, is not in those, in those places. You talked about the wealthier people. I don't know maybe where you come from. But for me, I think even in this country, the politicians, maybe a few here and there, who are, but the politicians are not the, the richest. You've people who have gone, gotten into agriculture, people who, have, who are doing produce. When, I, when you go to my town in Dokolo, you, some of the, the, the houses, the best houses, commercial houses that came, mm. they were for produce dealers and, and people who, who, yeah. who are involved but, in the production chain. And we need to support them, yeah, to build on that and encourage everybody yeah. to, to invest. So there's a lot of room mm. 
Yes. For us to streamline how we, 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 we are appropriating uh, the resources and, uh, and encourage uh, the education path to emphasize competence-based mm. so that we have people who come out and they get into workshops and who come out and they are productive and are able to create more employment and also be able to generate wealth. Okay, uh, yeah. very <laughs> comprehensive uh, mm -hmm. submission. Just honorable pleasure, just one minute, please. Let me give you the last word on this, whatever you need about it, especially this conference to communicate. Uh, first and foremost, we <coughs> do salute Ugandans who are supplying to the conference a number of services. Yes. And uh, I also wish to appeal to Ugandans to actually seek for the opportunities that are available in this. Three, I uh, want to assure the country it's because of the stability of this country that uh, international visitors are coming. Let us continue to cooperate with security agencies to ensure the country remains stable. Uh, the threat of terrorism is over the whole, the whole world. We have to keep alert. Uh, terrorists have not spread us out of kindness. It's because of vigilance that we have been able to keep them at bay. And lastly, um, please, 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 the hospitality of Ugandans has been known internationally. Mm -hmm. uh, where I was, I'm brought, I was brought up, once you have visitors, you keep your differences in the rear mm -hmm. until your visitors leave. So this time to be together as a country, mm -hmm. we'll come visitors, give them hospitality, tap from what the money they are bringing in. Build oh, the network. Build the, the networks, exactly. Yeah. Networking is the way to go. Yeah. You have 54 countries coming here, different people. Mm -hmm. When you get in, in, in touch with the foreigner, exchange a business card. Mm. You never know. Mm. Then after they have gone, we can go back to our issues. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> Honorable Brigadier Felix Fulaije, UPDF representative in Parliament and the head of the security of team. And accreditation and committee. And accreditation, accreditation committee. Yes. Yes. And Honorable Paul Amoru Omiat, MP Dokolo North, the vice chairperson of ICT and national guidance and chairperson. Uh, you're you're closing that. We need to thank NTV six, yeah, and yes. you and NTV <laughs> yes. for bringing us to the people. I know yeah. by watching us in Uganda Indeed. and also across and the world. Absolutely. Yes. 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 No, it's a great so, partnership and yeah. we're going to continue. We have yeah. uh, still more engagements, mm. especially for this particular project and we're grateful for... And we appeal to you still, yes. but the rest of the media industry mm. to stand with us. They're already doing a good job. Yes. Let's keep on drumming. All right. Yeah. Uh, thanks our viewers for mm. keeping with us and indeed just keeping us as your number one station. If you're out there as an NGO or a government a ministry, a department or agency, and you want to pass a message that is comprehensively packaged, just as this, please come talk to our general manager, our sales team, or myself, and we'll have a great discussion over that particular issue that you're concerned about. Please keep logged on to us as NTV, your number one station. God bless and Good night.